one of those things that you can just sneak in, right? One of those really good like add-ons, additives. And maca is a root vegetable that grows in the highest elevations of the Andes Mountains in Peru. Originally. It's a Peruvian cruciferous <laughs> root vegetable. And there's a lot of legend and lore in the Peruvian culture and the Incan culture around maca. One of them is that the Incan warriors would actually consume copious amounts of maca before they go into battle. They basically like fast on it. That was their, their source of energy, endurance, and sustenance. And the Incan warriors were known to be very fierce and all that, right? Like indigenous warriors. And this is their fuel supply, basically. It's very hormonal. It's very like anabolic. It's subtly anabolic, I should say. It's not like a steroid or anything like that. But it's got those those little precursors that like really, you know, vitality and vigor and strength. It's known for those things. It's also known to be um, fertility enhancing. There's a lot of stories surrounding maca um, culturally about it. There is one story I heard about, a very famous story about um, a Caucasian man who married a Peruvian woman. Then he goes to Peru and stays with this woman's family and they, he's eating a lot of maca, but this man is infertile, like about 50% of the Western population, as statistics show right now. Um, and he's infertile, can't have a child. He's like in his late 40s, maybe 50s. The mom says, oh, baby, you're gonna have a baby. And he said, no, 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 I'm, I'm infertile. I can't, I can't have a baby. And then lo and behold, very soon after, he gets his Peruvian wife pregnant. Right? Interesting. Um, one of the things about that is that it's sperm, spermatogenic. It increases sperm count up to the, up to 50%. Really interesting. So what that means is that you need to be careful. <laughs> you need to know what you're doing, right? You need to know certain techniques. <laughs> very, very important. Check with your partner. <laughs> right? And again, that's a big thing. 50% of the Western population is infertile. One of the indications of a species going extinct is a species that can no longer propagate itself. Very important idea right there. We're on a razor's edge right now with our species. 50% of the population can't even repopulate itself naturally. We have to go to the doctor and get all these like modifications. Like people don't need to get their tubes tied anymore. Don't even worry about that. It's unnecessary, right? But then you add in something like this and studies show that it can, doesn't necessarily will, but it can increase sperm count 40 to 50% through consistent usage. Maca is very hormonally balanced. It's known as an aphrodisiac, not necessarily an aphrodisiac in the way we think in the immediate sense. It's more accumulative. It's like a tonic herb in that way that it's not like gonna stimulate your, your libido right away, but it's accumulative. The more you accumulate, the more you compound in your body, the more you have it, it, it creates that, that compounded effect. And for women, it's very balancing hormonally, slightly androgenic. So your androgenic hormones, like your progesterone, are going to start to come up a little more. It, it, it opposes catabolic hormones. Remember, catabolic breakdown hormones, hormones that cause us to break down quicker, right? And maca is almost a complete protein. It's one amino acid off a complete protein. It has 17 known amino acids, including all essential amino acids. So it's, it's practically a complete protein source. Um, and then it helps bone density for women. One thing about bone density, a lot of people are focused on bone density. If you look at longevity, especially for women specifically, one of the things that comes up is bone density. Osteoporosis is defined as bone mineral deficiency, right? That's why we have this whole like calcium theory, which actually doesn't make sense at all. You take calcium supplements, it builds calcium on top of your bones, in the between your joint capsules. I can show you pictures of what that looks like when they do the x-rays of people that have arthritis, that they have these like broken down, like almost like gargoyle-like conditions. 
It shows calcium formations in between the joints, in the brain, in the spinal column, between the vertebrae. All it's it's full on, right? We'll get into that tomorrow a little more. But so bone density has to do with three factors: minerals, the essential minerals for your bones. Are minerals like for your bones? What's your bone made out of? What have we all been told? Calcium, right? That's why we drink milk for some reason, because we need strong bones. I mentioned this before, I'll mention again. Every culture that has the highest rate of osteoporosis also consumes more than any other culture in what? Dairy products. Dairy products, cow's dairy. And I guarantee it ain't raw dairy, right? It's all cooked up, homogenized, clumped up fat molecule dairy, right? I love glow in the dark dairy, that's my favorite thing. And they do an experiment on that. It's so it's so present. The things you need are magnesium, silica, boron, manganese, iron. Those all that together builds bone. Then weight bearing exercise. Weight bearing exercise is critical for bone formation. You need something to actually pressurize your bones. And then that creates the anabolic hormone secretion that that sit that stimulates in the muscular region the mu you know your musculature and creates bone density you need to actually challenge your body enough for it to counterbalance hormonally otherwise if you sit on the couch all day long or you're not moving around you're not challenging your body even if you do yoga but no anabolic exercise uh, you don't you're not balanced enough right and then the other thing is progesterone testosterone for men for women, progesterone, progesterogenic foods. So I already mentioned like Chase Berry Vitex has bioidentical progesterone, um, progesterone cream, all that kind of thing. But then maca has progesterogenic, progesterone promoting precursors, right? So it helps with that as well. Mm -hmm. And then as far as how do you take it, I'd recommend you cycle in and out. You don't do it every day. Some things you just, you cycle in and out, right? Intermittently. So I would do maca, one tablespoon, half a tablespoon or one tablespoon a day in your smoothie or even in your elixir, four days in a row, three days off. Same thing with progesterone cream. Four to five days in a row, two to three days off. And then keep cycling it. Or 14 days on, two weeks off. That kind of thing, right? So your receptors in your body have to soak it up. They have to soak it up. And then you take a break, and then your body goes through its natural production cycle, produces its own hormones naturally, and then you come back to it when, when the receptors free up, right? Okay.